So my name is Mateusz Front and mm, I'm going to tell you a bit about um, the media streaming framework we are developing at Software Mansion, a Polish software development agency. Um, and since I am going to uh, talk about the media streaming framework, uh, I also try to uh, tell you a bit about uh, media streaming itself. Uh, what problems uh, are there with media streaming? Uh, why is it challenging? and why did we need to create uh, another framework for that. Uh, yeah, so let me start with uh, showing you some examples what actually uh, the media streaming is. Um, so the first example uh, you see it's um, uh, like you have some API uh, that exhibits your uh, super clever uh, system that does some uh, operations on multimedia and so uh, you need to stream that multimedia from clients to that to that system uh, so we basically you need some streaming app that will uh, take the multiple connections that uh, in come from the clients uh, transform the stream because it's really uh, in the format that is accepted by your API uh, then pass the stream and handle uh, responses. That is, that's basically basically how it works. Um, another example will be a bit more complex. Let's say we are creating a radio engine. Uh, so the most simple radio engine possible, I think, is that we have some static audio stored in some, some uh, storage and uh, we have a client and we need to stream this audio from the storage to the client according to some lineup. Uh, but it's a rare case that you have one client, you usually have more clients, so you will probably need some streaming server or even CDN or an FM antenna that, uh, that will transmit this to, to multiple clients. Uh, but um, also, it's a rare case when you only stream the static uh, audio with, with, uh, within your radio. Uh, you will probably need some uh, live sources uh, that's, that will, uh, so basically uh, people that speak to microphone and do some auditions, uh, and uh, some remote sources that connect via some, some network to, to your radio, and you also need to stream that. Uh, so. Uh, the what what actually uh, we should do to achieve this this goal uh, we need to create an app that uh, also handle dynamic connections but not from clients uh, but from uh, different our uh, audio sources um, and also handle different codecs and protocols because uh, depending on the audio source that is connecting uh, different protocol will be used for example different uh, it will be handled differently when you just read the data from the storage and differently when you have live stream uh, from from some remote uh, source or and different when you have uh, just a microphone connected uh, so um, uh, this, this was, uh, these were two, two um, examples to show you uh, the idea, uh, and uh, I think uh, despite uh, there are many um, things to care about in, in such systems, they look quite simple. Uh, but the problem is they are not simple. <laughs> Uh, they are <laughs> very challenging actually and uh, what is uh, even worse uh, even a simple a much simpler systems that do some multimedia streaming are challenging so I'm going to show you a third example uh, to, to discuss that uh, so let's say we have a microphone that connects uh, that is connected via some network a Bluetooth network a Wi-Fi network or whatever network to our app and then we want to retrieve the uh, stream from this microphone and play it on a loudspeaker. So uh, 
um, to get a bit deeper into into this, let's see what uh, what kind of data comes in uh, to our streaming app from this microphone. So if it uh, comes from a network, uh, it will be some kind of packetized stream. And the first layer of packets that we will need to care about is the transport layer, network transport layer. So basically UDP, TCP, or something like that. In this case, we will probably have UDP because uh, in live streaming, um, TCP don't, doesn't always work well. For example, if you have retransmissions in TCP, you will need to wait for the packets, to, for the lost packets to be retransmitted, while uh, it usually should already have been played. So, so it's no point in retransmitting this, yes, because you will need to wa wait for this too long. Uh, so this will all, all only waste the bandwidth, so it's just better to, to forget about this lost packet. So that's why we uh, use UDP in live streaming mm, in this case. Inside uh, of uh, the transport packet, we will have some packet that um, relates to media streaming. Uh, so uh, for example, RTP, that stands for Real-Time Transport Pro Protocol. And this will provide us with some data <coughs> that is more media specific. For example, the exact timestamp uh, um, at which this particular packet should be played. Or some indicator what kind of stream <coughs> is inside if we have multiple types of stream. In this case, we have one, so we don't need this, but we would. Uh, and then uh, inside such packets, we will uh, have an audio, but uh, it will be probably encoded. Uh, for example, with, the, with Opus Encoder. Uh, Opus Encoder, Opus Codec is uh, quite nice for uh, live streaming because it doesn't introduce much algorithmic delay um, uh, and it has quite a good compression, so it's widely used, for example, in WebRTC. Uh, and inside we will have uh, the raw audio that uh, can be played uh, using our uh, speaker. So let's see how this will uh, kind of shape uh, our application. So we have the microphone and then a component that will read the data from the UDP socket. Then we have uh, RTP handler that will make use of all this data uh, stored in uh, RTP packets, in RTP headers in particular. Then we have a uh, decoder, uh, in this case uh, Opus, that returns the uh, raw audio and the player that uh, writes the data to the sound card so it can be played. Uh, via loudspeaker. So um, this looks even simpler, I think. Uh, so uh, let's see what, why it's not actually that simple. First, the stream has to be consumed at the proper speed. It's uh, quite uh, obvious that if we have a live stream, the data should flow um, according to uh, some proper speed. But note that uh, when we have this remote microphone and we have this uh, uh, some kind of player. Uh, there are, they have two, two sound cards that are two different devices uh, that don't have to be synchronized with each other and uh, actually they are usually not synchronized perfectly with each other. Uh, so we will need to apply some uh, correction to uh, make it synchronized because uh, if we don't, after a long time of streaming, the the system may fall out of sync totally. Uh, so that's that's the first challenge. But um, also we cannot assume that the input we uh, receive uh, from this microphone from the network uh, will be what we actually expect. Um, for example, it might be malformed because of some network disruptions or it can be malformed because of bugs in microphone software or for whatever reason. So we need to handle somehow uh, the decoder failures that uh, it may cause. Um, also, another problem it might, might be that uh, in multimedia we have tons of different uh, ways how to embed metadata in the stream. For example, in MP only in MP3 we have at least three or four ways to how to embed the uh, metadata. And there uh, are at least the four, three or four standards, not mentioning different implementations and variations and stuff. So it's not r really not hard to find or encounter uh, the metadata format that we do not support. Here I have, mm, here I want to tell you about uh, one situation my workmate uh, encountered when uh, doing um, a system that is shown. 
so it basically um, uh, had what is on the left, so two media, so two video streams, and he wanted what is on the right, so uh, these two streams put um, one next to each other, uh, and uh, some overlay over it, and, and some effects. So he, what he used for that is a snow mix. Snow mix is a system that um, does exactly this. Uh, that uh, composes video uh, according to some specified pattern. Uh, and uh, uh, among many problems uh, he encountered, uh, one was not about the video, but about the audio. Because these the streams were also equipped with audio, so um, this audio needed to be properly mixed uh, together. Uh, so uh, what he got uh, uh, after after um, putting it into this snow mix what, uh, was a uh, small piece of noise and then uh, audio he expected. So uh, we were starting we started uh, debugging it, um, and that's how you debug zero uh, audio stream. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so zero audio stream is just a sequence of bytes that, that needs to be properly interpreted, and any sequence of bytes can be a proper audio. Uh, so it's basically hard to debug. Uh, but after some time, we uh, we have uh, discovered that uh, the first uh, first uh, these these red bytes, when you treat them not as an audio stream but as the ASCII codes of letters you get snowmix version 0 0.5.1 backslash <laughs> m. <laughs> yeah. So snowmix just prepended the audio stream with this, this line. And this <laughs> solution was to skip, uh, sk skip everything until you uh, find the uh, new line marker. Yeah. Uh, and the, it started working. So th that's how we do deal with metadata uh, in media streaming. OK, but let's get back to our challenges. Uh, it's not the end, unfortunately. Uh, so uh, I said uh, I showed you uh, um, the example of how a raw audio stream looks like. Of course, there are multiple ways how to make the audio stream look like that, so how to store it in memory. For example, uh, so basically, a raw audio stream is a sequence of numbers. So you can encode it as integers or as floats, or using uh, two bytes or three bytes. Uh, and there are there are m multiple ways to do that. Uh, and the, for example, um, in, in our case, the player um, is not supposed to uh, handle all all these formats or all the formats that exist. So uh, it might happen that you get the stream, you decode the stream, and you get a uh, raw stream that is not supported, despite uh, the, it was encoded with the same decoder, uh, encoder, uh, etc. Uh, so uh, you need to apply conversion. But uh, conversion is usually lossy uh, because of many reasons. Uh, and uh, it could be another presentation about how to make it uh, less lossy or how to minimi minimize the loss of quality. Uh, what is even worse that, uh, for example, at some point the microphone, my microphone software may decide to decrease the audio quality, and then uh, the raw audio format will change, obviously. So uh, it might happen that everything work, works fine until some, some specific condition happens, and uh, the stream uh, suddenly happens to be uh, incompatible, so you have to uh, inject that, that conversion dynamically. Mm, but mm, this is still not the end, because uh, even before we actually manage to compile our system, we have some difficulties. For example, uh, we have uh, using Elixir, yes? So let's assume these four components uh, are Elixir libraries. They will for sure have a lot of native dependencies, because you rarely encounter an uh, opus decoder written in Elixir, yes? And uh, what is the problem with these dependencies? Uh, I think the main problem is that um, they have extremely div diverse APIs. I, I would call that uh, a kind of uh, explosion of uh, human ingenuity 
how to how to how these APIs are are designed. I would never never expect that uh, such simple things can be designed in so many ways. Uh, so you need to somehow handle it to to bring it to your system and to keep it all together working. Um, <coughs> what is more, uh, in Linux, for example, we have uh, this package config stuff. And this gives us the proper linker flags, compiler flags, and you can basically compile any library quite uniformly. But not every library ships with the package config. Uh, so uh, for some libraries, you, you want to manage to do that. Uh, so it's very hard uh, even to make uh, this mix compile task work out of the box. Uh, if you have uh, Elixir and na native dependencies that, that are taken from different uh, places and that uh, have different assumptions, APIs, and, and stuff. Mm. Uh, so uh, the question is how to do multimedia streaming and stay sane? Or in other words, how to do multimedia streaming and not care about at least a few uh, things I, I mentioned before. Uh, so uh, here is where the membrane comes to play. And the first uh, thing it provides is uh, the abstraction layer. Uh, the abstraction layer that allows to make uh, streaming applications in some uniform manner uh, so that uh, some of these issues uh, I mentioned can, can be solved automatically or so solved by some uh, generic, um, generic tools. Uh, so this abstraction layer is inspired by GStreamer. Has anyone heard about GStreamer? Some of you heard, okay. But um, most of you didn't. Uh, it's good because I, I, I have some slides about the, uh, our uh, abstraction layer that is based on GStreamer. <laughs> uh, so um, GStreamer is a, uh, another uh, media processing framework, but it's written in C. Uh, Usually, when you think media streaming, you're feeling some low-level languages, not, not a high-level languages like Elixir or whatever uh, high-level languages are. Uh, but uh, what we, uh, what we uh, found out is that uh, when doing media streaming, you don't usually need the uh, perfect uh, super performance. But uh, what you often need is reliability, scalability, and ease of development. And this is provided by uh, Elixir uh, ecosystem. Mm, this can be provided by Elixir ecosystem. Uh, and uh, what is more, it doesn't uh, mean that uh, this won't, uh, will uh, eat your, all your resources, because the uh, um, amount of uh, the, the, the performance that it exhibits is not that bad, not, uh, not um, very, very much worse than uh, when using native, uh, native stuff, uh, especially when you uh, use some native dependencies that are already created. Uh, so uh, we have an IP, uh, an abstraction layer uh, inspired by GStreamer, but, but mostly uh, in terms of concepts. And these are these are concepts uh, I'm showing. I'm going to show you. Uh, so uh, we have this pipeline, uh, and these four components uh, are here uh, that are here in membrane terms are called uh, elements. So we have four elements, uh, and uh, we can distinguish sources, filters, and things here. So uh, sources provide the data, filters transform the data, and things consume the data. And this entire pipeline is called here, surprise, a pipeline. Uh, so uh, we have a pipeline that consists of elements that are linked, linked together. Uh, so how they are linked together? They are linked together with paths. Uh, so we have uh, each element uh, has some paths. Uh, for example, it has a source ha has the one output path and the RTP handler has input path, and uh, they are connected uh, together, uh, and all uh, these elements ha are connected in this manner. Uh, of course, uh, pipeline doesn't have to be linear. Uh, for example, if we have two uh, audio sources and we want to mix them together, uh, then, uh, then the audio mixer needs to have two input paths. But in this case, we, um, so in case we have of mixing audio, we usually don't want to 
uh, limit number of inputs to any specific number. So that's why we have uh, dynamic paths in membrane that allows us to connect, uh, to dynamically connect stuff. Uh, so they can, the dynamic paths can be dynamically instantiated and there's no limit on amount of these paths. Uh, so how this all is implemented and provided? Uh, so we have uh, this membrane core, uh, the part of uh, the framework that um, does this for you. And uh, what it actually, uh, actually does is uh, it uh, handles life cycle of elements and pipelines. Uh, so um, elements and pipelines are processes. Uh, pipeline spawns uh, elements processes and manages them. So this is done basically in the core. It builds actual uh, supervision trees also and provides some error handling mechanisms. Um, of course, it, uh, it enables to link elements via paths and implements back pressure. So we will have two elements A and B and A sends uh, data with some speed. Uh, so then B is guaranteed to not to receive too much data. Basically, it's implemented um, in a manner similar to GenState. Uh, and uh, uh, also, the membrane core uh, implements uh, audio and video synchronization. It actually uh, will be released in the subsequent release that is going to be published in like a week or two. So stay tuned. Uh, also, uh, the clock synchronization. So uh, as I mentioned, we have this microphone and uh, this uh, app that consumed data from the microphone. And it had some sound card. And we needed to stick to the clock that is inside that sound card and not the system clock. So this way, you can tell uh, all the elements that uh, need the clock for some reason, not use the system clock, but use this particular uh, sound car clock. Um, also, it handles the different buffer types. Currently, we support um, Erlang binaries and pointers to the shared memory. So uh, some processing can be done in separate uh, system OS, process OS processes. Mm, um, and uh, it, of course, provides an API for extending frameworks so for creating new elements. Mm. OK, so we know basically how this works. Uh, so let's see how uh, do we use it. So again, we have the, sam the same pipeline, and we want to implement that. So uh, we'll do this in a manner similar to, uh, similar to the case when we are uh, using Gen Server and implementing a Gen Server module. So we are mm, uh, creating a new module, uh, some pipeline, and we use the membrane pipeline that brings uh, all the necessary stuff. Then we start to implement, uh, start implementing uh, callbacks. Uh, the only callback that is actually needed is handled in it. So for a basic pipeline, it would be enough. But usually, it would, wouldn't be enough. So that's why we have another callback, but it's a long story. Um, <coughs> so first thing that we specify in the handle init callback is the children, so uh, uh, elements that are inside the pipeline. And we provide their options. So in this case, we have UDP, uh, source decoder, uh, opus decoder, RTP handler, and uh, the player based on port audio. Then we need to link these children together. Uh, so uh, we, we create a map um, that uh, has uh, keys that are outputs and values that are inputs. And um, that's how we provide uh, the links. Then we create the spec, so the struct that contains both children and links. And we return, uh, return this um, to the framework. And that's basically it. Uh, of course, it won't solve all the problems I mentioned, but it will solve some. And with uh, not that big uh, effort, it can solve more. Uh, and so to be complete, um, let's see how do we run this. First, uh, some alias for convenience. Then we start link, uh, do we use start link function as usual, and we do a pipeline play. Uh, on a pit, and that's basically all. Um, OK, that was the membrane. I hope you liked it. Um, however, um, 
We also created, uh, while doing uh, Membrane, we created some other apps, apps uh, or libraries that, are, uh, that used to be part of Membrane, but uh, there were general purpose enough to publish, publish them as separate libraries. The uh, first one is Bandlex, is a dependency manager for the native code. I mentioned that forcing mix compile to work if you have tons of recursive native dependencies is difficult. Uh, that's why we created uh, something like a separate build system that uh, runs uh, on the top of Mix uh, that resolves all these dependencies, uh, linker compiler flags uh, uh, as far as it's possible, uh, and, uh, and um, allows you to, to seamlessly uh, build it um, without, without uh, some uh, unnecessary uh, boilerplate or stuff. Uh, another thing is uh, Unifex. Mm. It's uh, built over Bandlex, and uh, um, if you if you ever used some uh, native code with Elixir or Erlang, uh, you must know that it's not the uh, the easiest thing or the most nice thing. You need to uh, write uh, tons of boilerplate, or maybe not tons, but quite a lot of boilerplate. To uh, even to create the uh, native some native wrapper or interface, uh, and also for parsing arguments, returning uh, values uh, and stuff. So Unifex uh, uh, makes it much much more easier. Uh, you just it just generates all the necessary boilerplate, basing on some uh, on some small uh, Elixir config file. Uh, and uh, we designed it in the way so that in the future uh, it, would, it will enable uh, you to run the same code uh, uh, either as NIF or as uh, C note, uh, so that uh, you can choose uh, somehow between the speed and the uh, fault tolerance or reliability, because if, as you probably know, when the NIF fails, uh, entire virtual machine fails, which which is not, uh, which are, which ports are not subject to. Uh, well they, this is basically all I wanted to show you. Uh, so the more information are available here. Uh, don't mind to uh, look there. Uh, contact us via Discord or email, or contribute contribute via GitHub. We are open for contributions. Uh, and thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please ask.